Hey, welcome back. I'm finally recovering enough to uh, think I can make it through one of these videos. Just had one of the colds that's been going around, a pretty vicious one when it comes to the respiratories. Hmm. This probably is going to be the most juvenile thing most of you people <laughs> have heard. And I apologize, by the way, to uh, William, who's asking the question. But um, I'm sitting here talking about sharpening charcoals and pencils uh it uh, <laughs> so let's just go you'll see why you'll um let's just go and look at um and holding and how to hold pencils now it's it's a thing where you know in a sense there's no such thing you know, what your hand wants you to do or what services you best you know is um <clears throat> is uh what you're going to do but Every once in a while, you just listen to somebody who says, I do it like this. And, uh, and you're going to get something, something just a little different out of it, something thought-provoking, maybe something you might try. Anyway, but so <laughs> please enjoy this. Uh, William P. says, I'm honing my skills in drawing and I'm confused how to hold the pencil. Darkwell, do you have any advice? I'd appreciate it if you have the time. Maybe doing a quick video would help others as well. Been pondering. Maybe grades and types and applications of pencils and charcoal as well. Um, so I'll talk about all those things. Um, maybe the um, maybe the first thing I should uh, just mention is that we I'm I, I'm starting here with a if I can locate it a stick of vine charcoal fairly typical of what we did even in New York uh, at the Art Students League it was vine charcoal for everything. Um, I'll stick this in my pocket for a second. <clears throat> I don't forget it was there. <clears throat> but that's what this can is sitting here for. Is This is my collector of charcoal dust. Typical coffee can. Everybody uses them in the studio. A dime, dime a dozen and then some. And this is a piece of sanded. It's a piece of cardboard with sand. With a, In this case here, a sanded... Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I guess a sanded screen would be the best way to describe it. It's, a, uh, it, it, it's for... Uh, <clears throat> for uh, sanding uh, drywall. And they come in various thick grades as well, but I, this is just random for me. I'm, and, but what's happened is, if you look at this thing, I'll get up in my focus here, you can see this thing is pretty, is pretty flat. You know, it's just nothing to it, right? This is the way the vine charcoal comes. Vine charcoal also, just so I mentioned, it comes in hards and mediums and softs. And, um, uh, and they come across, at times they come across like pencils, the softer ones seeming to be harder. They, it's an interesting uh, bunch of things though you can do by having the variety. It's a good thing to have the variety. And I'm gonna walk you through a couple of uses of it, but the primary use that we got out of Gamel, this is me sanding here, right? And all I'm doing is I'm rotating this thing in my hand. But what we learned to do with Gamel is we learned to, to, um, well, what he would call create a dental instrument out of it, but to draw with a charcoal point, and, and which I'm sure was in the, a, a factor in the uh, in the museum school is undoubtedly the way they were working because the lines that I've seen on those pencil on those charcoal figures, which would be about maybe 26 inches high or so, the figures it's in the 20s somewhere, and uh, but but the but the quality of the line is so fine. It's so spectacularly fine uh, that the only way you could possibly get it any consistent in a consistent, you know, a continuous movement would be, you know, without it getting dull before you got to the end of the line, would be to be, to have a really sharp, long point. Hence, the dental instrument. <laughs> the gamel used to refer to this as... Uh, um, but you can you can begin to see that it's getting to a point that you you you'd be hard pressed. Here, can I show it to you? There, you'd probably be hard pressed to to get yourself uh, a pencil point. Like you certainly could get even that much of a point with pencil using a pencil sharpener. But that gets you an idea, though, right? So I sharpen I, as you rotate, rotate. You'll see. It. Sometimes you'll find a hard spot in your charcoal, and if you grind on that spot, you can rotate that point over to one to the to the better side. You can better get better use of it. Typically, just for your information, William, I, I use charcoal like this until it gets somewhere toward halfway down, 
at which point I stick it into the holder, which I buried in my pocket here. Um, and the holder is, so you can see this is an extension. You get a lot more length out of it. So if you enjoy the length thing, and here I am getting rid of that dust, by the way. I rather like this. Uh, I never used it before, the sand, the sand stuff for a drywall. So here's, a, here's one of the, the um, Nissan brand rectangular ones, and it's in this holder. And I'm simply rotating it the same exact way, just rotating it, rotating it, rotating it, and turning and, I mean, and, 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 and um, going back and forth at a very serious tilt like this, right? Not like this. So you get a very long instrument out of it. And just going round and round. Some of my students would find themselves sharpening uh, multiples of these so they don't have to pause. But I always liked the pauses because it would give me time to reconnoiter, right, and get my wits about me again. So I, 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 I wasn't necessarily that guy, but I would frequently be drawing without even putting down the sharpener because I didn't want to forget and start using very dull points. I, I think of these dull points as like a dull mind, you know, the, the uh, this sharpness of your point, you know, the unambiguousness of it. The, more, the sharper it is, the less ambiguous it is. In any case, you can see where I'm trying to go with these, with these various things. But the less ambiguous, ambiguous it is, <coughs> So when you're articulating a line with a point, you can see immediately when some part of a bump is off. So one of the charcoals I've showed you before, and I'm going to have to, I tried to do this in a different way, but I can't get my focus working on this overhead projector thing I have. So I'm just going to show this to you here. But you can see here, this was done initially. Let me get rid of these things. This is done initially with a, uh, <clears throat> it's on It's on, on a blue, um, uh, surface like a pastel surface. <clears throat> um, I recommend if you're going to do an off tone ones, you use the felt gray. Canson, I believe, makes it. Um, but you can see certain lines in this thing, how thin they were at the beginning. You can see how you would be able to reproduce a line like that. This is obviously a softer charcoal, but that line was easy for me to re to produce. And so we're, we're drawing with a very fine line. And then the beauty of this point is that you can then tickle it. And some people will turn little circles or whatever. Just you just you start glazing with it because it's such a fine point, instead of stroking with it. Now I do both. To quick mass something, I might well stroke it, but I don't. But when I but when it comes time to really nuance the turns and the value, there's where you need a point, a really sharp point. Otherwise, it's really clunky, and you can't get that sfumato, you know, the smoke effect that Leonardo talks about in those middle tones. So, uh, but that gives you an idea of the idea. So the lines, some of the lines are still showing along here and uh, in the very, fairly sharp edged along other places. And then, um, and then you can see the drift, the, the noodling kind of a drift that's going on in certain key places. That's, that's a pretty good example of it. There is another piece here. I'm not, uh, by the way, I'm pushing toward gradually getting a, a, um, a, a flat, value, especially in the darks. I'm not looking to make it a strokey thing, but my approach to drawing is rather a, it goes from rather a sketch look to a finesse look. And you're all over the place with that larger, looser look with certain points being articulate. And then, and then the finessing is, you might start using a thing like a, um, uh, like a stump or a paper towel folded up. If you haven't tried that, I should have I should have brought one. I'm not sure if my the one I'm using now would be very appetizing, but but let me just gradually get rid of these points so I can so I can have made them. But that's the first thing I would tell you. But the thing I didn't tell you that you want to know the first question you have is how do you hold the charcoal? So there's an inclination to be overhanded. You know, in baseball you talk about over throwing overhanded. Well, that's exactly what you don't want to do with the charcoal because the force is already on the paper. What you want to do is flip your hand like an underhanded uh, softball thrower and, and hold, hold your hand. See if I can see, does that show? I think that shows, doesn't it? But hold your hand like this. And you'll see, I'm going to show you an actual photograph of it here in a second. And, um, but think underhanded. And you're in full control. Then you, I mean, you go to lean the, pa the pencil down. It's got no weight on it. You actually have to use your thumb to create pressure to even to even get you can you can get absolutely the most nuanced touch this way, 
So you might say it's side-handed, but it, I start by saying, let's just put our hand like this and then draw, rather than assuming there's something about this pencil position that you learn to write with when you're a kid, okay? That ain't the one you want if you want to actually have the most mastery of the line. So consider that for yourself as a, as, as, as a thing that I found. And maybe you found better ones. Uh, in any case, that was your first question. How do you hold the thing? Now, when it comes to a thing, uh, uh, by the way, there's nothing wrong with you even touching the board you're drawing on. But if you do it, make sure you only use your, the fingernail of your pinky if you need it for some control, okay? And um, otherwise, use a mall stick or something like that if you're trying to stay off the, you know, uh, you know what a, do you all know what mall sticks are? Just a stick that you lean on the edge of your, of your drawing so you can rest your hand on that stick and be able to articulate. That would be for doing moderate, mo moderate things. Uh, <laughs> somewhere in here I have a drawing I was meaning to maybe show you. that or One of the things I was trying to do is draw with a more fluid line, a longer line. And I've, so I just, at one point decided to put a... A, uh, an entire extension of uh, I made out of a an old brush, chopped the end off, drilled a hole in it, and slid it on to a charcoal or pencil in this case, and I drew that far away, and it forced me to memorize the line and get the line, the whole thing under control, but way out there, like in my shoulder, rather than in my little pinkies, right? So it's very much in keeping with that old, if you've ever heard it, the old idea of draw with your, uh, of, of when you're doing handwriting, to write with your whole arm instead of just your fingers like this. It was a thing that we were taught, or at least we were told about. You weren't taught to do it well, I must say. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so that's the first thing. Um, now, when it comes to pencils, there's a similar thing that goes on. And um, let's see if I can do this without losing everything I've got here. And, um, and f starting with the sharpening, except that with a pencil, you can see this pencil has been has an extended end. It's tapered. So what we've been doing with this is, is we're, we're trimming this thing up so that we get an inch, half an inch, some number of point, of extension uh, of, the, uh, of the end. I hope you can see that. Of the end of the bristle. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, from, the, from the wood part to the point. Now, there's two reasons for that, but one, one of them is so you can actually see what you're drawing when you're drawing with a point, so you don't have to look past the wood uh, thickness. But the other one is to be able to sand it better. Now, that's pretty sure. We used to sand them, I mean, uh, sharpen them m more than that, you know, up to another half inch more than that. But you can understand what I'm doing. I'm just making you aware of the extension. You're going to have to figure out at some point, some of these things break more easily, the softer ones. Uh, so ultra ones, I think, usually come thicker, maybe for that reason. And then what I'm doing again is going back to the sandpaper and really bringing that point, okay? Rotating as you go, as always, right? Rotate, rotate, rotate. You can get the exact angle you want, and you're really going to get a beautiful dental instrument this way. This one gets caught in the uh, interstices, so that may be a distraction. <laughs> that may not be the best thing for using with pencils. Anyway, but again, you can see we've got our serious version of a um, of a um, of a dental instrument here. And then what we're doing is again the same thing. I'm holding it always the same way, and I'm articulating with the longest line I can, with the longest line I can memorize, right? And then and then coming back, and you have to learn to be able to place your pencil back into that line because you're going to draw frequently. You're going to be drawing an extension onto that line or a correction onto that line. So you have to be able to, to well, first of all, believe me when I say that it takes manual dexterity that a lot of guys don't have. I think maybe you women have the, the sort of the fine motor thing in spades comparatively. And, um, but it's a thing that can be, you know, it's just muscle tone and you really ha do have to, uh, 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 if you've been out there swinging hammers around all day, you're going to have to, you're going to have to find this fine motor stuff. It's going to take a bit of time, a few days or so, maybe longer, to get that part of your body so you can actually be quite fine with it. And then again, as I said, if you want to do something finer in a more controlled way, you can use your pinky to rest it on some part of the drawing. It's a fairly standard thing, but you can see that look of my hand. Am I showing you? <laughs> no, I'm losing it. All right. 
There we go. Thanks. That look of my hand. That's a thing, right? That's the thing. It's a side armed. It's a side armed look. <laughs> okay. Anyway, enjoy it. You're going to find it's much more restful on your arm if you do this overhandedly. You're going to feel stress through your shoulder. I mean, through your um, biceps, and then down right, right down through here. Is that your biceps? <laughs> Gee, Paul, you're losing your anatomical memory. Uh, but you'll feel strain, and you don't want to feel strain. You want to work with an easygoing arm. And this is going to give it to you this kind of a this kind of a position, and then uh, and then just again be aware to draw with as much of your your body as you can, you know. And as you your things like that are recommended to you in many sports as well, to be to, to be to be hitting with more of your body than your wrists, for example. All right. Now the second part of your question is uh, everybody knows I think this stuff. You can work with pencils called Ebony's, and there's a bunch of other different brands. By the way, there are pencil holders of this type too that are pretty nice. A different, slightly different type from the one I was just showing you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, here's a second one of those. Sometimes the um, pencils don't fit well into them. Uh, use some tape on it or something like that. But I go all the way from. Um, <clears throat> Maybe I can show you these 2H to H. This one's H. <clears throat> so this has H, HB, 2H, H, HB, uh, 3B, 6B. Now, I'm just mentioning those because, I, 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 but I've mentioned them before. And all I'm going to say about them is it's self-evident what, what you do. The point is you don't keep pushing on the, on the fine pencils. <clears throat> to get values. Um, if, you want the, if you want a darker line, go down, get, you know, go down into the Bs, all right? If you want the line to show better. And there's an old discussion about drawing that is that you draw a lot, you, you draw it the first time through, you draw lightly, and that what, what pencil drawing is in particular is a series of drawings, one over the other, getting progressively darker as one gets bolder. That's a that's a general dis or a discussion you'll pick up here and there. Now, um, I really did want to show you these with a close up, uh, but I'm going to show you one other thing first, and then I'll go back. Then I'll go to some images, and that is that with Gamel, Gamel, I, and I think I may have shown you this before. And it's a similar, it's a very similar kind of a thing, uh, but it's a chunk off of a disc that uh, that Mr. Gamel owned and offered me a piece of, because it's Italian chalk. And it so resembles uh, what you'd find in the um, in drawings by Raphael and others, and it's just a beautiful look. Now I never thought it was going to be particularly useful because it's but red. You can't really go black with it. But I'll show you what drawing I've done with it. I'll show you a drawing here. <clears throat> As I went along in my career, I found it a more and more beautiful medium just on its own, which a lot of people are into more than I am. <clears throat> But everything matters in our form. So anyway, all I'm doing is the same sandpaper, and I'm turning and turning. I'm never going to get the same quality of point. I'm not even trying to get that length and point. But you probably could. You could probably split this thing in half, you know, the long way, uh, if you're really thoughtful or have some, some great device for doing it, and make yourself two long, thin pencils. I have no idea. This is not, um, this is not the, that... Um, uh, Oh, what's it called? The uh, it's not the red, it's not the it's not the manufactured red stuff that people use. This is actually red chalk, and it's like literally gotten out of caves. Uh, in any case, what that is, it's the same for the same purposes. You just I, again, you won't get the same quality of line as a Raphael if you don't know how to sharpen a point and use a point. So the point's the thing, right? It's it's not a it's a pretty significant bit of stuff. Uh, by the way, one of the other things that Gamble would say back to that idea of drawing lightly and then drawing darker over is that, is that Gamble's idea was you draw, put down a note and if the or a shape or whatever it is, and then time to correct it, if the new line isn't better, take out the old line. I'm sorry, keep the old line, take out the new one. But I found that, that using the old line, letting it show and drawing darker through it gives you a much more, a much more use of those early mistakes. Or those early attempts. So, uh, let's. So let me just show you this. Actually, let me let me talk about let me talk about images. So that's that's there isn't. This is a very modest presentation. I don't I don't go into the the um, zillions of things that one can use um, 
to make pictures, uh, to make drawings. And, um, you know, the fineness of all that sort of stuff is not my, my uh, thing. Uh, so let me just show you. So this is with the sharp. These were both done with sharpened charcoals, um, and uh, <clears throat> and if you took a piece of paper towel, I'm just me folding it and folding it again. You can eventually get yourself a really really nice kind of a, a stump. So the backgrounds in both of these cases, the shadows are stumped, but they're but the and the but in the background, the smooth flowing background through here is stumped, shadows again stumped, meaning that you've taken all the strokes, the, any linear strokes that might have been in there out. Uh, let me see, I'll show you a drawing that's not really far from... So this, so this is a, the way a drawing could look, one of my drawings. Again, I hope this works. I'm just using the focus of my face, which is the camera focus. Maybe you'll be able to see this. But you can see this is a charcoal... <clears throat> this is a charcoal figure of the... Um, of the uh, Venus de Medici, and um, what you're seeing is a, a the charcoal line as a line drawing. And, and I began at one point to use to decide that these kinds of charcoal drawings that you're seeing on the screen uh, are, are would 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 be best served done first on white paper, at least when you're trying to not destroy the drawing. Would be done best as line drawings like this. So. Uh, <clears throat> And, it, and, I, and I found that it did work really nicely. You could, this is highly suggestive. That kind of line drawing is highly suggestive. Uh, of, you can get the form, but it's not a full value thing. It's a setup. You can see your great proportions, great forms, great gesture, uh, all that sort of stuff. Well, and then you can begin a process of then saying, what's my dark is dark and, and beginning to work from the massing. Now, the one thing we avoid, and another reason for the very sharp point is we avoid doing any modeling, any, any rubbing in the lights. Uh, I'm simply talking about my, my, as it were, academic training with Gamble. We modeled with the sharpest of points in a kind of a very glazy kind of a way. And I learned to gradually to find the lightest light and glaze backwards rather than, you know, finding the shadow line and glazing in toward the light. I'd find that if I glazed from the lightest light, I would understate that. By the time I got back here, I'd have to go back and do it again. But if I went from this side, I'd wind up too dark almost every time when I got to the, to the highlight. So, but that's all done with a point, and that very finesse point. You keep sharpening it. Don't let it get dull because then it'll pick up the gravelly look uh, and you'll start being tempted to, to rub it. And you don't want to do that because it becomes immobile. It, it does, just, just doesn't move well after that. You can touch it with an eraser uh, if you do it the other way with just using the point. So all this stuff here along through here would be done with just the point. Uh, hopefully all these middle tones, this is Lindsay's, hey Lindsay. Uh, these middle tones in through here, <clears throat> presumably done the same way. That was the encouragement that I made. Well, this is my student, and, um, but this is all, but it definitely was what I was um, uh, told to adhere to. Uh, the, uh, uh, or in any case, in conversations with each other, we concluded if we, if, I, that's one of those things where you sometimes never know. Uh, but um, in any case, by the way, this is, this is so uh, smooth, you can't see the, and this is very much an attempt to be sfumato with the, the Leonardo model. Not my best attempt, but still a, pretty much that idea. But the, um, <clears throat> the photographs are so, they fixate, they zoom in so much that it looks more broken and more, more clawed at in a way that you'd never see the thing in person. And if you took this and blew it up, it wouldn't look like my drawing because it'd be so aggressively <clears throat> marked. All right, so, but just letting you know that. Um, so this is my, this is, by the way, this is Mr. Producer uh, at a couple years ago at a younger age, <laughs> and um, and when he, he just had he just had it in and con concluded to uh, to sit for me one day, and it was it was an excellent thing. Uh, I think he must have been reading a book or whatever. Uh, we had a great time, and um, I think we both did. Um, and again, I, I really thank you for the, for that moment. Uh, that was such a, such an excellent thing you did. But this is that line, fine line, 
that I use, and then there's a significant amount of, of diagonal stroking, which I, as I admit, I get from Leonardo. In both cases, Leonardo was the model with Gamma more than anybody else. And it was all about a fine line, and we started fancying these parallel lines. So it's, there's nothing about it except that. That's all that comes from, you know, for somebody was critiquing me for not using <laughs> somehow or other, maybe a more varied line or whatever. It's not typical of um, the rest of my work. I certainly don't do stroking, cor you know, parallel strokes in painting or anything. But, um, but this gets you an idea, though, where you're using initially the lighter charcoal, the pencils, you can see the marks of them here. And gradually these are being done with uh, this. I'm guessing this, this, this thing has three different values. It might have been as few as three different. Probably was a um, two or three B and uh, and a and an HB, and maybe an H before that. Might have just been starting with a, an HB and then going to a couple Bs. Uh, but I like the idea of uh, if you use it, if you sharpen up an HB or any of the Bs, if you sharpen them up good, you can draw. It'll take to the paper quicker, and now it'll make a mark that you might if you press on it'll be too dark. But a lot of times that makes a better quality mark, you know, just using that soft, slightly softer pencil, but using it sharp with a sharpened point. When my eyes, my eyes have never been the most, most um, uh, strong, you know, sharp. So for me to have that meant something when it was more difficult for me to see, at least when you're sitting back away from your drawing, to see that 2H line, uh, which people with, it, with very fine, uh, you know, long distance viewing can see. But you can see what the process is, though. It's to gradually get, it's, these things are trying to be drawings, but they're tr gradually trying to get to being more and more true in more complete ways, like full value and stuff. But my drawings, I've never intended for them to be studies in that photograph way. I've never, I've never been told to do that. I've never had any interest in doing that. I don't buy into doing that. <laughs> so um, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I find that just anyone can do. But the idea of using efficiency, getting getting a sense of the form without having, having exhausted yourself by, and only getting it by just the sheer amount of noodling you do. It requires, to me, it requires a more, of, uh, more of an intellect, more of a, of, of a requirement on yourself to grasp form ideas. And to articulate them with efficiency is very much in the, court, in the nature of, of most good drawing you see. I don't know if much of anybody actually historically has ever been, you know, concluded somehow that noodling is a thing. I don't know if you can see this one. This is a, this is a, um, this is an interpretation done similarly to the uh, to Mr. Producer there. And my hand's probably gonna be shaking too much, but maybe you can see that a little bit. But that leg there is just me probably going through one area of a figure just to ask myself about what sort of a look might be adequate. Give me all the things that I really care for in pictures. Uh, what would that look like, you know? And so I get a really great, my idea is really beautiful sense of form, uh, suave sense of form, beautiful articulation of line. Here's another one, just a leg. Uh, but it gets an idea, though, that there's a fineness that can be had without becoming a noodler. And it's the study of the contour plus the study of form that really makes our form what it is for me. And that's why the the sharp point is so important, and then the, uh, unless you're using full values, it's a different story, and I'll talk about that. But that gets you some idea of what I was looking for. I guess I can maybe give you one more here. I don't know, I don't even know why all this stuff is in this stack. Um, <clears throat> this is a figure, a full figure, but again, it's not a noodle job. It's not trying to get, and these are, by the way, are typically less than, they're three days or less, and I mean three, nine hours or less. So that's a fair amount of time compared to the art students, like, which used to give you a maximum of about an hour on one drawing, maybe once every few month, weeks or so. Um, but again, it's the idea of expressing form, you know, through contour and, um, and modeling without full value, without just simply leaning on the truth, the literal truth of the values. It's all relational, and that way is also good for us. I'll just, uh, because they're sitting here and they're blocking another drawing I'm gonna show you, I'll just show you two more drawings. These are, this gives you an idea, these both will give you an idea of the, sort of the sketch mentality that you'll find me working in. Um, there's my friend Judy. She had a beautiful face, very, very, the, the great, one of the great things about the uh, Greeks is they, I'm just the idea of the beauty of the even, the even figures, the even uh, features and that sort of thing. 
But that gives you an idea, though, how I go from light and uh, thin lines. And none of that stuff is, I mean, everything's borrowed. That's one of the things that Aang says, borrow that stuff. You're borrowing it from, say, someone like, um, who loves line, like, um, like anybody from, uh, oh, maybe Aang, but, uh, but certainly um, Disgustus John or somebody like that. So here's another, about the same time, Philip. And again, you can see the, my, um, the amount of just line activity that's trying to be precise, making it as like as you can see it. There's no construction drawing going on here, just for your information, by the way. And, um, but you can see that it, I operate rather from a sketch modality, and then I bring articulation, you know, more plausible articulation, in as much as I can, the visual order. If you want to, uh, you, can, you can buy my video, Drawing in the Visual Order. I apologize every time I say it that... <laughs> that it isn't more, oh yeah, I should bring this right up here, I meant to. So, so this is actually also the, um, this is a better, easier to see probably image of that one of uh, Mr. Producer. All right. <clears throat> and then lastly, let's see what else, that's, that's it for that. This didn't, I, I apologize for turning this into a show of, of my drawings, but it's just all about that, what you can do with a sharp point. And um, so even this one here, and these are a couple of my favorite things. Uh, I've probably shown you that one before. And for all of you who haven't seen it before, look at my, uh, look at my drawing demo with the, um, with the uh, horse in it. And you'll have an idea how pretty much I approach the drawing into mass problem. But these were just strictly line drawing in the old traditional sense, uh, drawing outlines of objects and noodling, you know. So it's fairly typical. Uh, this was a, from a cast, so it was an attempt to do a lost and found visual, you know, interpretation. Uh, and um, and this is from a cast as well. So this is a, a pencil version of a line drawing. This one I'm pretty sure I can't hold still enough. What I found with the with the focus is you couldn't actually see the kind of fine articulation you can get. But this painting from one end to the other was done with a really well sharpened point. Just mentioning it, uh, William, for what it's worth. Okay. I said I did mention before. I did mention before the um, this that drawing here showing up here. This is being I'm being silly. I admit it. But you know you didn't give me much to work with there. I was already finished the. <laughs> the lecture an hour ago. But this one here, I don't know if that all shows up there. Yeah, there it can show up. This one here is the one I drew with a 15-inch extension. <laughs> Total of about 15 inches. And uh, it was surprising to me how, 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 how articulate you can be. And everything on every mark on here was done <laughs> with that extension. So it's nutty. It tells you something about how much of this about drawing is in your head, rather than in some you know perfect handling, some some have some perfect tool or something like that. Uh, this one gives you an example. I'll, I'll leave off at this one. I think uh, of these showing off things, but this is an example. All these are student day things, by the way. Every I think every single one of these, um, and they're usually I usually have them in the in the sort of the mentality of answering questions. I was trying to figure out answers to painting questions, drawing questions. And uh, part of what I was trying to figure out is how to get enough information into a drawing, which I think is what the most masters are doing, to be able to, without wasting time here in noodling, to be able to then use it in a picture. So, but this one shows you how, the, I'm using a softer and duller pencil out at the edges now when I start this massing. So I'm not, a, I'm not glued to the idea of, um, of using a sharp point in areas like that. So it's a, it's a softer pencil and it's a dull point. I, I've caught myself using somewhat closer to being the side of the pencil. Uh, I don't do that much, but there's nothing about it. That would, there's nothing inhibiting you about that. But this drawing was a, an attempt to take, my, to take a pencil into deeper and deeper values. Um, and you can see that I'm getting about nearly as black as a charcoal can get. All right, so let's see what else is on this screen here. 
Yeah, so you can see the uh, pencils in the background again. We And if you go look at the video about the landscape drawings, you'll find this. Um, but these are these are done with the H-type pencils. And then the next levels, that's say the values. So when I'm drawing, at some point, I'm drawing with a different pencil. And you can see by the time I get down to the foreground, I'm drawing with definitely in the B family type pencils. Again, typically sharpened. But if the paper's rough and you're trying to create texture, that's not as necessary. In fact, it's not ideally, but necessarily. This is another example where you can see a numbers of the marks in here. That isn't by a lighter touch. That's an actual lighter pencil that's doing that. And uh, it's fairly typical. So the darker smudges in through these areas here aren't, a pr aren't putting more pressure on. That's, that's the darker pencil doing that. And that's the way I tried to, that's why I tried to discipline myself. But you can see these in that other video. Now this is a whole different story. And now you're seeing me holding the charcoal. This was a demonstration uh, at a workshop. For this demonstration, it's what I call mass drawing on brown paper. So you're, go you're pushing both the lights and the darks at the same time. But I'm still using line into mass. So I'm, I'm doing some articulation of a shape, perhaps that one, and then massing it fairly quickly. Uh, in fact, immediately. And in this case, by the way, I do it just so you've, if you're wondering what that is, I, d I find a rectangle first. I even look through a viewfinder. When I'm doing an interior, I treat it like I'm doing a landscape and I want into the exits and all that sort of thing. Uh, not necessary, there are other ways to do it, but uh, that's what I do. And, uh, but you can see that I'm using this big fat. That's, that's the size of a, of a finger, certainly the size of my little fingertip. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't sharpen it at all. That's a, absolutely not, not needed. And I use a white chalk that's also as, but as stupid looking as anything. Um, but it's just a dull, and, I, and buy it at Walmart. I mean, that's the one that works best for this brown paper stuff. Don't, don't use pastels because they're too soft. But the nice thing about those, those ones from uh, Walmart is you can just blow them off again. And they're not, they're not greasy or so soft that they are become difficult to get off the canvas. You can easily move darks into lights and lights into darks. But this one shows it's a whole more sort of carelessness about the massing because the idea is to quickly get to the, um, to the, uh, con the contour, which is going to require eliminating strokey lines and that sort of thing. So whenever you see me in places like this, actually articulating a phenomenon, this is a visual order drawing. And I'd use this as a teaching tool in the, um, in the, in the um, world of um, the intensives that really is the intensive, which it looks like I'm not holding this year, is, in, is designed to be um, uh, um, there just to show the, the visual order methodology, uh, the thinking that goes behind, the, the method that goes behind that thinking. So, uh, so in any case, yeah, you can see, but in this case here, I'm moving to as quickly as I can to, I don't mind for a while if it's loose mass, because I need to be getting around and getting around. But at some point, I'm going to simplify it into as simple as, you know, if it's, especially if it's flat shadows, I'm going to really flatten it with a, anything, stuff my finger in, stuff the, the um, paper towel, you know, the bent up paper towel that I just showed you, uh, and do that. And this, these are some uh, by, this one is by a student at that uh, event, one of the events, maybe last year's event. Um, this photograph is overly lit, so I don't know if it's just a different day or what, but this is more true to what was actually happening. The lostness here was greater and in there areas like this. But just, but you can still get the idea of what, what the game is there. And you can see that the emphasis is far more on eliminating marks in the mass for the sake of keeping your attention on the events, the main events. Uh, and so on. So that's a dull, again, the fat, dull charcoal. That fat, dull charcoal will make you as sharp a point as you want. You don't have to get in there with a careful stick, oddly enough, or pleasantly enough. <laughs> it has, the, you can create an edge very quickly um, just by the way you're marking with it. And uh, yeah, but that that's most of what I can tell you. And you know, I think the, the heart of this whole thing is just keep your, keep your hand, un, keep yourself underhanded with the mentality of, um, of drawing with your whole arm. And you're gonna find this works nicely. Sharp points are the most brilliant things, wonderful things. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I have anything else for you. I think that's it. I think I did have one more drawing. Let me, let me not stop, pause just yet. <clears throat> I don't wanna leave without showing you this. And I haven't had a chance to show this to anyone recently. I only discovered it. Um, but I thought it was uh, definitely worth a minute just to take, 
just to give you a shot at it, I'm, I'm doing a painting from this as we speak, uh, as it were. And I think that's probably turned towards you as good as I can do it. Hope that shows up. But that uh, is a, my attempt at a, a red chalk drawing. And not an early attempt. I'd copied uh, Raphael and I'd done some other drawings from figures. But this, is, this was pretty good for those days. Um, in any case, I hope you can, I hope you can follow um, why well, I would show you that. Oops, I better get away from that. There we go. I guess, I guess it wasn't too hidden. All right. So, sharp, again, the sharp point is the key to this. Um, to, the key to control, probably, the way we were taught it. <clears throat> All right. There are many other forms, and uh, maybe another time I'll talk to you about the other ways we did things. But for now, I hope that helps, William. And uh, <clears throat> I hope this has, this has been more, much longer than I thought it would be. <laughs> So uh, anyway, I wish you well. Thank you all for sharing, uh, liking, donating, nice donations this week. Um, and, um, and I think, um, <coughs> just hang with me a second. I'm going to actually tell you who the donors were this week. Um, because I can. Um, All right, so Benjamin C., thank you, Stephen J., Doug A., and David D., thank you very much for your contributions this week. I'd so appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and you hopefully were able to use some of this information yourself if you're not just playing too advanced for what I just did. I don't want to be this guy who just assumes knowledge. I don't want to also be this guy who talked down to people. Um, I'm just sharing what I was given, and it was given to me at a time, a hugely timely way. So it's my thrill and delight to be able to share it and to maybe jump as it did me, you know, um, jump your, um, your um, jump start, <laughs> but, but, or give, a, or give a, an advance to your abilities. One thing I will say about all this kind of stuff is that you can, whether you ever work somebody, else, somebody else's way or not, to hear what it is gives you a point of departure. You can then say, well, what if we try it like this, though? What if we try it like that? It's all fine. Uh, I always found what the guy I was working with to try it the way they were saying first and get an idea about it, and then options come around, you know. That's what I said about the fetching thing. I saw here's a guy who's doing, who's, who gets this form destroying the line. He comes back and draws with the line right into the midst of, of oozing form. It just was very evident to me he wasn't drawing an outline and noodling back, you know, or noodling between the lines like a coloring book. Um, so in that description, by the way, Drawing is, is a degas, you know, drawing is um, what happens between the contours. But, um, but that's just one of those things that gets you, keeps your knees bent and gives you more options than you might otherwise have had. So, so yeah, for what it's worth is what I'm saying. All right. Again, thank you all for your attention, your comments, and all the rest. And, um, and I hope to see you. In, I hope to be in another one next week. Okay. We are working, by the way, on a... On a uh, live one again, Mr. Uh, producer just told me we need to be getting on to that. And in, also, in the meantime, I might maybe next week even have uh, Tom Donnelly again for a conversation. All right? Okay. We'll talk to you next time.